Hello and welcome to AB 474, Indoor Environmental Control. This is the um, session for Chapter 3 in our text, which is Psychrometrics. And this will consist of several um, sessions to cover the material from the full chapter. Um, this first se session will be some review of chemistry that we've seen in the past, but we'll need to have a thorough understanding of psychrometrics. Um, and we'll start with um, a quick definition. What, what, what is psychrometrics? Um, psychrometrics consists of the study of moist air. Um, please note the spelling of psychrometrics. There is an R in there, pretty important. Your word processor is gonna want to try to change this to psychometrics, most likely, um, or just outright reject it, so you may need to do some, some programming there. Um, so don't confuse it with other terms that may pop up. We are talking about psychrometrics. Be sure that you learn to spell it correctly, hint, hint. Um, and as we move through these sections, this is what we're gonna be focusing on. But as I said, in this session, we are going to um, cover some review. So let's review some chemistry. Um, specifically, let's take a look at the ideal gas law. And I am sure from chemistry, this is ingrained in your memory, PV equals NRT. So let's break it down and look at each of the variables and make sure that we recall what they each stand for. Um, P is our absolute pressure of the gas that we're working with. <clears throat> as we work through this, we'll try to um, refresh our memories on units as well in both SI and IP units. So we could be working in Pascals or atmospheres. Or there's a long list of other units we could work in, but these are two common ones. V is our volume. Uh, we might be working in meters cubed or possibly liters um, or cubic feet. And volume is mass over density. It could also be represented as mass over density. Um, N is our representation of the amount of substance that we have. and we represent that with moles for either set of units. Um, that could also be represented as our mass divided by our molecular mass. R is our ideal gas constant, which might also be referred to as the universal gas constant. And in SI units, it's 8.314 joules per mole kelvin and in IP units 1,545 and some change um, feet pound force divided by pound mole Rankin gotta love English units um, that's what it is when we see a capital T, we're going to be looking at absolute temperature. <clears throat> and that would be either in Kelvin or Rankin. So if we're looking at a specific gas, we can modify our ideal gas equation slightly. And we are going to um, identify our gas as just X. Um, and in this case, we are going to um, use specific volume. which is one over the density. Our ideal gas constant is gonna be replaced with a specific gas constant for our gas that we're working with. <clears throat> and that can be um, 
also represented by the ideal cast constant divided by the molecular mass of the substance X that we're working with. <clears throat> and a couple of examples that are given in your text um, are shown in equation 3.2, which is the specific gas constant for air, which works out to be 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Or um, equation 3.3, which is the specific gas constant for vapor, for water vapor, which is 462 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Um, and as we said before, but just to be sure that we're documenting and we're clear, this capital M that we see up here and down here um, stands for the molecular mass. And X is representing the substance that we're working with in these lower equations. <clears throat> so let's work through um, an example, again, just to kind of help us refresh our memories about um, the ideal gas law and the applications of it. So um, let's say we have an e example of a compressed gas cylinder. So we have a compressed gas cylinder containing oxygen. And um, we're going to remove some gas from this cylinder. So essentially we're going to exhaust it to our room. And um, we're going to follow our homework format in this example to get ourselves in the habit of doing that. Um, I like to see sketches. So even just simple ones, just to show me that you understand the problem. So we have um, a control space, which is our cylinder in this case, and inside we have O2. And we are going to take out some O2, right? So we are given is that we have some gas released to our room. Uh, we're going to be given that the temperature of our room is 20 degrees C, um, and in just a second we'll need to label that, so we're going to go ahead and call it T3 now. Um, let's create a little chart so showing um, the state of our um, uh, gas at, the, at three different conditions. So the first one is going to be at the start, so before we do anything. The second state is going to be uh, of our cylinder after we have let some of the gas out. And the third state we're going to look at is um, the room that we're exhausting to. Um, so when our cylinder starts, we're going to start with a pressure of 300 psi. And the volume of our cylinder is 50 liters. Um, and our starting temperature of our cylinder is 30 degrees C or 303 Kelvin. Now after we release some unknown quantity of gas, we now know that our pressure is 100 PSI. So we allowed the pressure to change from 300 PSI to 100 PSI. The volume of our cylinder has not changed, so we're still at 50 liters. Um, and our final temperature of our cylinder is 10 degrees C or 283 Kelvin. Um, what we know about the room is that our temperature of the room is not going to be changed by the amount of gas that we've released. Um, and so it's at 20 degrees C or 293 Kelvin. Um, we also um, know that our um, pressure in our room is at one atmosphere. So the gas that we're releasing isn't going to impact the pressure in the room either. All right, so what are we being asked to find?
In this example, we're asked to find three things. So the first thing what is the initial mass of oxygen in the cylinder? Second thing, how much remains after we allow, after we finish releasing? And then the third, how much did we release? So let's work on our solution. <coughs> um, so we know that our starting pressure is 300 psi. And we need to convert that into, um, we need to make sure that all of our um, pressure units are in the same unit. Um, so I've chosen to convert everything into atmospheres. And you'll see why in just a second. It's just for simplicity. So this is my conversion factor. So the pressure inside the cylinder is 20.5 atmospheres but I need to get my pressure into an absolute pressure. Um, and I know that my room is at one atmosphere. So I need to add that one atmosphere to get my absolute pressure. <clears throat> and then my ending pressure, I need to follow the same approach. And I get that the absolute pressure um, of the cylinder after we've released is at 7.8 atmospheres. Okay. Now I need to make an assumption here. Um, in order to apply the ideal gas law, I need to assume that my gas in my cylinder is behaving um, like an ideal gas. And this is a side question for you that we're not going to answer today. Um, but does O2 behave ideally when it's compressed? Um, and that's a very good question to know how valid this assumption is. Uh, but like I said, we're doing this as an example. So today we are going to assume that it does behave like an ideal gas. Um, and we would like to know how much gas was in the cylinder to start. <clears throat> and because we've assumed it behaves like an ideal gas, we can just apply the ideal gas law. <clears throat> and here's our ideal gas constant with a different set of units uh, but that work for this problem. Um, <clears throat> we get 43.27 moles of O2 and now we need to convert that into mass which our mass is the number of moles times the molecular mass And we end up with 1,382 grams at the start. Okay, and then we are going to apply essentially the exact same methodology. Let's get the number of moles. Let's 
16.7 moles of O2 um, at the end. And if we follow the same approach again, we'll get that the uh, final mass is 536 grams. And then to see how much is removed, if we just want the difference in mass, that's simple. It's just subtraction. So um, we would end up with 846 grams. And that could be our answer. Or we could um, ask for our answer in terms of volume. And if that's the case, then we have a little conversion to do here where we look at the change in mass over the molecular mass uh, times our ideal gas constant. And we need to factor in the temperature and the pressure at our final state. And if we do that, we would find that our final volume, or the volume released, is 635 liters. And with that, we are going to um, stop here with our review of the ideal gas law and we'll pick up in the next section uh, applying that ideal gas law in order to uh, start to build a foundation by which we can start to discuss psychrometrics. So um, come back soon for the next installment.